creating cultural awareness and understanding. This is Culture Click. Culture Click is written and produced by KQAL FM on the campus of Winona State University. How do you explain the bumps in the night, the chills you receive down your spine, the shadows you see in the dark? Was it your imagination? Someone messing with you? What if it was a ghost? Today on Culture Click, we take this burning question to the historic Pickwick Mill. A few hours within the long-standing mill have resulted in some possible evidence of a haunting. I'm Giovanni Bermudez. I'm Kit Crenshaw. I'm Zach Hiller. Join us as we dive into the manifestations of the Pickwick Mill on today's special episode of Culture Click. We arrived at the Pickwick Mill right before sunset. The tall building was ominous with its almost unnatural structure. Doors that led to nowhere under a cloudy sky and the only sound is the rushing water of the river nearby. What were your guys' takeaways? The first thing I noticed was the sign that said, beware of water snakes. As a person who does not like snakes, I was less than thrilled. Uh, What really stood out to me is that, well, uh, we already kind of talked about it, but how tall the building is. Uh, It's not just because it has a lot of floors. It only has, I say only, it has six floors. But from where we were, there were four floors above us, and it looked like a lot more than that, because those floors were very tall, uh, more than 10 feet in your usual house. The building was skinny by nature, making it seem almost structurally unsound. You look at it and you're waiting for it to topple over and crush you underneath its towering height. So we started touring the location. Uh, We walked into the building, and the first thing I noticed was the smell of wet wood and mildew. What about you all? The air was heavy in there. You could feel the four stories on top of you on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. Even on the top floor, felt like it was pushing up on you. As you go up the floors, you notice that there are artifacts left behind from the mill when it was still functioning. Uh, Some of the machinery could still function, which tells me they really took care of that place. However, despite of how well they took care of it, like there is just an air of something terrible happening. The emptiness, I think, kind of fueled this uh, worry that there had been some sort of accident. People weren't there like they should have been in the mill. On top of that, we found a scythe and the dust room. Yes, the dust room, a place that was just riddled with dust. And and in that location, all the dust that gets pushed throughout ends up in, quote-unquote, the dust room. But when you enter into it, it's just an empty room with a terrible smell and a foreboding aura. When the sun went down, the event officially started, spearheaded by Mandy Beach and her mother, Gail. So, is the meal haunted? Is the meal haunted? That's a super good question. Okay, so... Yes, we're not actually saying the mill is haunted. However, I've worked here for a couple seasons. I've had a couple experiences that I can't really explain. Um, I think it might be more residual, and I'm gonna go through that. Like there's intelligent hauntings, there's residual hauntings. So, um, and especially since this building is made out of limestone, we got running water over here. There's certain things that um, energy can get trapped and then can replay itself sometime. I had a neighbor, he was walking by, he saw a blue light, like an orb, circle of light moving and it was night, nobody was in the mill. He's like, it wasn't a flashlight. So yeah, I don't know if that really answers your question. Definitely (laughs) not. So, um, and what I think, the next one is residual, which I think there might be a lot of that here. Residual energy or residual hauntings are more of something replaying itself. Um, um, Stairways have a lot of residual energy because you think about even here, how many times, for how many days, how many years, people are going up and down those stairs, you know, just leaving their energy and just that motion. And so if you hear footsteps, I mean, it could be a different type of haunting, but it could, you could just be hearing something from the past echoing. Though they couldn't tell us whether or not the mill was haunted, that's exactly what we were there to test. The presentation began with a breakdown of what they used to go ghost hunting. 
What really jumped out to me were the dowsing rods, a piece of equipment I wasn't expecting to see when ghost hunting, especially alongside a lot of these uh, technologically advanced pieces of equipment. What stood out to you all? The EVP is, of course, the classical piece of ghost hunting equipment, but my favorite is the spirit box because it involves the radio. Uh, to me, the one that stood out the most was the ovulus, uh, which is a device that uh, it has a dictionary of words and phrases that a spirit or ghost or whoever it is may pick through in order to sort of communicate. Right, it was about 25,000 words, I think they said. Two a of lot. those words were sacrifice and then soap, which it said. Well, soap happens to be the name of Zach and I's cat. Right, and that is not the first ominous thing we saw that night. Uh, after the presentation, we all went upstairs to the fifth floor, which they said had the most activity. As we sat down into our respective chairs and got the equipment rolling, quite a few anomalous events occurred. Uh, the first of which being a apparition that appeared in the background. I noticed a man walking in front of the windows in the back of the room. Uh, Mandy began to point that person out, saying, is anyone walking back there? After careful questioning, we found out no one was supposed to be there. So that man walking back and forth in front of the window, we couldn't tell who that was. However, once we got into it, Mandy decided to turn on her spirit box, and that's when we started recording these audios. Now, there was a lot of them, so we're going to narrow it down to the most clear or the most impactful. Now, this first one you'll hear is one that gets repeated often. Throughout the night, we kept hearing one phrase more than anything else. Help us. Help me. Please help. Yes, we heard a lot of begging for assistance throughout the evening. It was unnerving. Now, there are a few ways we can see this haunting. Um, as Mandy points out, the most common kind of haunting that would be found at the mill is a residual haunting, which means these could just be relics of the emotions that were held at one point in the mill. And residual hauntings are... If we were to explain stone tape theory, the imprint of impactful emotional events in an area that have left um, imprints, as it were, footprints in the surrounding area, and that energy plays back in a loop again and again and again, playing out the events of the past. Regardless, though, you are left unnerved by the fact that this event in the past that we are not aware of, the only th imprint we can get from it is someone crying for help. As we went further into the night, we actually began to notice intelligent responses to our questions. Uh, one of these questions was asking the spirits how old it was, while someone else asked what year it's from. And it's kind of hard to make out what is said in this next clip. Now, I believe it's saying, I'm 80. Or it could be, it's 18, as in the start of the year in the 1800s. Or maybe I'm 18. Who's to say? Well, our audience is now going to get that chance. Now, what really makes this interesting is that this is no longer residual haunting, because residual hauntings cannot have intelligent responses to our questions. There are three types of ghosts. Residual intelligent and poltergeist. Fortunately, we did not meet a poltergeist tonight, but intelligent ghosts are a certain kind of unsettling, knowing that something is watching you, aware of your presence. And especially knowing what kind of anguish they must be going through uh, with all these help me, please help me. Exactly. That, that's a scary thing to think about, because what of these cries of help are not residual hauntings? That was the big takeaway by the time we were done in the fifth floor. Uh, by the end of it, we recorded quite a few, but we also got almost an unintelligible voice, but it's incredibly clear. You can tell this is a voice coming through the spirit box. Take a listen. After we were done on the fifth floor, everyone decided to pack up and many people went home. However, Kit, Zach, and I decided to go to the basement to do a little bit of our own spirit box work. We walked into that basement earlier in the day, uh, when the sun was still up, but man, the change in 
time, like when the sun went down, you could really tell the difference. At this point, I was cold in a way that kind of touches your bones. Not a skin cold, but all the way through. I was chilled. This is also the basement where we found the pile of dead beetles in the corner. And to kind of put you where we were there in the basement, um, the air just feels very heavy. You can very, you can really tell that you're under these five stories. Uh, another thing to note about this basement is that the floor was just made of gravel. Uh, you have no idea what's underneath that. Um, probably dirt. And there was a lot of bare stone as well. As we started our uh, voice box, of course we got the usual help me, help me, help me, which in and of itself was unsettling. However, we also caught some unique voices on this. For example, the first thing to come out was one that I believe is saying I'm perfect. I think it says I'm broken. But we'll have you guys judge. Take a listen. Now at this point, it is still hard to tell whether or not this specific haunting in the basement is residual or responding to us, until we got to our next point. While we were in the basement, uh, Mandy and her mother joined us, and they had flashlights on during the time down there. And while we were asking questions, something came through and very clearly said, flashlight. Take a listen. Perhaps this spirit was interested in the technology, maybe they were irritated by the light. It also is important to note that when Mandy is talking to these spirits, she tells them about going into the light. So this spirit might be saying that there is no light, there's only a flashlight. Uh, during the EVP session, I was walking around with my VHSC camcorder to pick up on things that we might not be able to see with our naked eyes. And as I was walking around and uh, later, when we were able to review the footage, we were able to see an apparition disappear. Now, this is an audio-only show, so we won't be able to show it, uh, but just believe us that we saw a white apparition on the footage. You know, it's funny you mention that, because the next EVP we got after the recording was one that simply said, Cannot face ever. Take a listen. Cannot This actually became a pattern throughout the night. The spirit that we were talking to sent, seemed to get a little more hostile or a little more hesitant of us. It said, uh, told us to kick dirt. Right, it told us to kick dirt, which you can hear here. Kick dirt. Kick dirt. Kick dirt. It said phrases like disappoint. Another piece of audio that we caught during that EVP session was one that I believe to be in another language, perhaps German. Uh, to me, this sounds like Ich heißen Bert. Uh, why don't you take a listen? Uh, the reason that we thought this might be German is that upstairs we learned that a lot of the original workers were actually German. So I believe this to be uh, perhaps Ich heißen Bert in German, and translated to English, that's something like, my name is Bert. Right, and so we got a bit of a communication there, and once again, it's like, uh, it gives the idea that this isn't just a residual haunting, that it's somewhat intelligent. But it got a little more depressing as the night went on. The next phrase to come out of the EVP, I'm dead forever. Take a listen. I'm dead forever. I'm dead. Now, it's interesting to point this out because at this point Mandy kept telling the spirit about the crossing over and seeing the angels and spirit guides, and it's almost as if the spirit heard her because it said angels in response. Listen. In response to Mandy, it says fake answers. <laughs> Now this could imply that it doesn't believe that it can cross over. That it doesn't believe us when we tell it that it doesn't have to stay here. Uh, but that's when it mentions something rather ominous. It mentions the others. Take a listen. Oh, sir. 
Does this insinuate that there are many spirits in the mill aware of their own mortality? Who knows? When we asked it, who are the others, it didn't respond. Instead, it only said, anything can help us. Take a listen. Now, the last phrase to come out of the spirit was a little bit nonsensical. It was reaper here peeper at least that's what i hear there could be reapers here reaper or peepers peepers take a listen Now at this point we're all pretty confused, we're not sure what's happening, we're not sure what it's trying to say to us, and we decide maybe it's time to call it a night. After saying this though, the spirit got rather hostile, and left us with a final phrase that would leave chills down anyone's spine. Imagine trying to communicate with something beyond this world, and the last thing it has to say to you is, DIE. die. Take a listen. At this point, we were a bit shocked, and we decided to turn off the recording. Uh, I will be honest, I was a bit shaken up. I'd have to agree, I was pretty shaken up, especially at that last point. Leaving the mill, we were offered a cleansing with Sage, but my last impression of the mill is the wet grass walking back to the car. All in all, it was an eventful night. Some may have come as skeptics, some as believers, but all left with a different reaction to what they experienced that night. The history of the mill is long, and it has stories that ring across the ages of Minnesota history. And within those walls, some believe that they can remain as hauntings. Is the mill haunted? We can't really say. But what we can say is, we experienced something tonight that we can't explain. And we hope to have shared it with you. Thank you for joining us on this special episode of Culture Click, as we took a night in the mill of Pickwick. Thanks to Mandy Beach and the Pickwick Mill for being on today's special episode of Culture Click. To see more of the mill, check out pickwickmill.org. To keep up with all things Winona and the surrounding community, tune into Culture Click Thursdays at 12.30 right here at 89.5 KQAL. I'm Giovanni Bermudez. I'm Kit Crenshaw. And I'm Zach Hiller. And from all of us here at 89.5 KQAL, Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween! Creating cultural awareness and understanding. You've been listening to Culture Click. Support for Culture Click is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Culture Click is produced by KQAL FM on the campus of Winona State University. For more information, look us up on the web at kqal.org. And thanks for listening to Culture Click.